33 people have died trying to cross one stretch of water in Norway. The waves are so violent that even modern cargo ships wait days for safe passage. Vikings used to drag their boats over land rather than risk these waters. Now, Norway is about to do something no country has ever attempted. Carve the world's first full-scale ship tunnel straight through a mountain. The Stadavet Sea looks calm from above. But beneath the surface lies one of the most dangerous maritime passages on Earth. This is where the North Sea meets the Norwegian Sea, creating a collision of currents that generates waves powerful enough to tear apart modern vessels. Since World War II ended, 33 deaths have occurred in maritime accidents within the Stadhavet Sea. The area experiences between 45 to 106 stormy days per year. The danger isn't just modern. The official Visit Norway website has claimed Vikings would drag their boats over the peninsula to avoid crossing the dangerous patch of sea. The Vikings are believed to have dragged their boats over Drag Sidet, a narrow land passage on the Stad Peninsula, to avoid the dangerous waters around Stad. If warriors who conquered half of Europe chose to carry their longships overland rather than sail these waters, you know the danger is real. The Stad Peninsula juts into the ocean like a fist forcing ships into the most exposed waters along Norway's entire coastline. The peninsula is one of the most exposed areas on the coast, without any outlying islands to protect it from the weather. Ships regularly wait for days, burning fuel and losing money, hoping for a break in the weather that may never come. Even when the winds die down, the heavy waves continue, and ships often have to wait days for a safe passage. The economic cost is staggering. Every day, a cargo ship waits. It loses thousands of dollars. Multiply that by hundreds of vessels per year, and you're looking at millions in economic damage from a single geographical feature. Norway already holds world records for tunnel engineering that seem impossible. The Leerdal Tunnel, stretching an astonishing 24,509 meters, is the longest road tunnel in the world. The Eiksund Tunnel achieves a depth below sea level of 287 meters, 942 feet below sea level but the Stad Ship Tunnel will dwarf all previous achievements. The project specs sound like science fiction. The tunnel will be 1.7 kilometers long, 50 meters high and 36 meters wide. To put that in perspective, the tunnel opening will be seven times taller than a standard road tunnel. One of the biggest engineering challenges will be constructing the tunnel openings, which will be as tall as the tunnel itself, seven times the height of a standard road tunnel. Approximately three million cubic meters of rock require removal. That's equivalent to removing a mountain the size of 1,200 Olympic swimming pools filled with solid granite. Drill and blast techniques will excavate the 1,661 square meter tunnel face. The rock they're drilling through isn't ordinary stone. According to Andreasen, tunneling through a thick gneiss layer requires a drill and blast process. Gneiss is among the hardest rocks on earth, formed under extreme pressure deep in the earth's crust. It's the geological equivalent of trying to tunnel through steel. The drilling phase already revealed the project's complexity. The investigations were recently wrapped up as the team had witnessed technical challenges and poor progress for some time. The drilling work took longer than expected due to water infiltrating into the borehole and high water pressures. When your exploratory drilling hits problems, you know the real construction will be a nightmare. A rock wall, or possibly coffer dams, will be used to keep the tunnel free of water during construction. Sections of rock will be left at both ends of the tunnel during construction to allow the team to work in dry conditions. They're essentially building underwater while keeping the water out through carefully planned rock barriers. Materials delivered by sea, owing to inadequacy of local roads. The location is so remote that they can't even truck in supplies. Every piece of equipment, every load of concrete, every tool must arrive by ship and be unloaded onto the same dangerous coastline the tunnel is designed to avoid. The environmental considerations are equally complex. If you unload a barge in the sea, you get dust and pollution that could affect marine life. We put a curtain system in water where water can pass through, but not debris, Andreasen said. Like most mega projects, costs have spiraled. In the spring of 2021, the Norwegian parliament approved that the Stad ship tunnel could be built within a cost framework of 4.09 billion Norwegian krona, 306 million pounds. This translates to approximately 5.06 billion Norwegian krona, 378 million in 2024 prices. Due to increased costs, the Norwegian parliament needed to approve a new budget framework for the scheme. Last year, 
the tunnel forecast exceeded that sum by 40%, according to administration data. The project that started as a $300 million investment is now approaching half a billion dollars. Six contractors applied for pre-qualification to construct the Stad ship tunnel. Among them are two Norwegian companies, one French, one Spanish-Norwegian, and two Chinese bidders. Four firms qualified to submit bids, while two Chinese consortia are out of the competition. The Chinese interest isn't surprising. China's Belt and Road Initiative has made them global leaders in impossible infrastructure projects. Their exclusion from the final bidding suggests Norway is prioritizing trusted partners over the lowest bidder for this critical project. Construction was initially expected to begin in 2018. Finally, the start of works has been delayed until 2025. But even that timeline is slipping. The aim is to sign the contract in autumn 2025 and start construction in 2026, provided the bids meet the project's budget. Construction is expected to take about five years. If they start in 2026, the tunnel won't open until 2031 at the earliest. That's a 13-year journey from initial construction date to completion. Renowned Norwegian architecture firm Snohetta designed the tunnel entrances. The terraces are built on stone carved out of the mountain where the tunnel is created. Using wire cutting and blasting, the terraces will have a naturally rough form within the precise geometry of the horizontal lines. They also designed walkways and the construction of a new road bridge to give visitors a view of ships entering and exiting the tunnel. Norway isn't just building functional infrastructure, they're creating a tourist destination around the world's first ship tunnel. Nearby places that may receive an economic boost from the tunnel's construction include Moloi and the small villages Selje, Oheim and Fiskobugt. The tunnel will transform these remote coastal communities from maritime dead zones into potential shipping hubs. The broader economic calculation remains controversial. In 2011, a report by Det Norske Veritas and the Institute for Research in Economics and Business Administration for the Norwegian Coastal Administration concluded that a tunnel would not be economical. Knut Samset, a project management professor with the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, criticized the decision to go ahead claiming modern vessels could navigate the seas safely and that cost-benefit analysis is negative. At an estimated speed limit of 8 knots, 15 km per hour, vessels will take about 10 minutes to pass through the tunnel. Vessels will be allowed through for one hour in each direction. Around 100 vessels per day will be allowed through. There will be no charge to use the tunnel. But the pilotage regulations will apply to the waters in the Stad ship tunnel. This means that vessels longer than 70 meters without a pilotage exemption certificate will be required to use the pilotage service. Critics argue the tunnel solves a problem that modern technology has already addressed. Critics of the project argue that it is a flawed investment because the danger posed to ships isn't as great as it used to be. Ships nowadays are bigger and safer and travel further out to sea. But the death toll suggests otherwise. 33 fatalities since World War II isn't ancient history. These are modern vessels with GPS, weather radar, and satellite communication, yet the Stadhav at sea continues claiming lives. The most recent accidents involve ships equipped with technology the Vikings couldn't have imagined. If successful, the Stad ship tunnel could revolutionize maritime engineering worldwide. Dangerous straits from the Strait of Hormuz to the Drake Passage could theoretically be bypassed through similar mountain tunnels. Norway isn't just solving a local shipping problem. They're potentially creating a new category of global infrastructure. But failure would be catastrophic. A half billion dollar tunnel that doesn't work would set back maritime tunnel engineering for decades. Every aspect of the project, from the rock quality to the water infiltration to the construction logistics, represents uncharted territory. The first bids will be submitted by June 1st and then evaluated through several rounds of negotiations before the best offer is selected according to the award criteria. If the offers from contractors exceed the budget of 5.06 billion kroner, then the project may need to return to Stortinget to obtain approval for a new budget. The next six months will determine whether this ambitious project moves forward or joins the graveyard of failed megaprojects. Norway has committed enormous political and financial capital to proving this concept works. The Stad ship tunnel represents more than Norwegian engineering ambition. It's a test of whether human ingenuity can overcome geographical obstacles that have claimed lives for over a thousand years. By 2031, ships may sail through solid mountain 
where Vikings once dragged their boats overland. But with costs spiraling and technical challenges mounting, the project that promised to revolutionize maritime transport might instead become a cautionary tale about the limits of engineering ambition. I'm curious to see your thoughts in the comments section. If you think this tunnel is wild, wait till you see China's 10,000-ton ship elevator going up a mountain. Click here next.